Hello friends, this video on neat electromagnetic waves is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we have done a quick recap on electromagnetic waves. So let us quickly look at some of the multiple choice questions. Question number one, out of the following options, which can be used to produce a propagating electromagnetic wave? Now, first of all, even before we look at the options, what do we need for an electromagnetic wave? So an electromagnetic wave must have an electric field. It must have a magnetic field such that the electric field and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the propagation of wave. So that's the requirement. Now let's look at the option. First option is stationary charge. Now stationary charge means the charge is at rest. Right? So a charge at rest will only have electric field. There will be no magnetic field. Right? So this is not the correct option. Option B, a chargeless particle. So if the particle doesn't have any charge at all, so obviously there would be no magnetic field, no electric field. So this is also not the right option. Third option is accelerating charge. Now since it is a charge, it will have an electric field. Now since the charge is also accelerating, that means it, its uh, speed is also changing with time. So that means it would also have a magnetic field as well. So here we have an electric field as well as magnetic field which are changing with time because the charge is accelerating. So it seems to be a correct option because this can produce an electromagnetic wave. How about the option D, a charge moving at constant velocity. So in this case, even though we have a charge, but it is moving at constant velocity. That means acceleration is equal to zero. So in this case, even though we have an electric field or a magnetic field, but they do not change with time. So therefore, option D is also not the right option. Question number two, the electric vector vibration of an electromagnetic wave is given by E is equal to 50 Newton per coulomb sine omega t minus x by c. The intensity of the wave is. So just now we discussed about the properties of electromagnetic wave and we found out that intensity of an electromagnetic wave is given by half epsilon naught E naught square into c. In fact, in this question, electric field is given. So we have considered this expression involving electric field. Had magnetic field been given, in that case we would have involved the expression 1 by 2 b square by mu naught into c. Right? Okay. So in this case, what are the values that we need? So epsilon naught is permittivity in free space which has a fixed val value that is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter. Okay. What about E naught? So here, if you look at this expression, you can compare it with this expression E is equal to E naught sine omega t minus omega x by c. Right? So here you see the value of E naught is basically this value. So 50 Newton per coulomb is the value of E naught. So E naught is 50 Newton per coulomb. Okay, and the value of C is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So now we know all the values. So let's calculate intensity. It would be half into 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 into 50 into 50 into 3 into 10 to the power 8. Right? So 2 into 25 is 50. So now when you do this, you get 33187.5 into 10 to the power minus 4, which is equal to 3.3 Weber per meter square. So that is C is the correct option. Question number 3. In case of linearly polarized light, the magnitude of the electric field vector does not change with time, varies periodically with time, is parallel to the direction of propagation, increases and decreases linearly with time. So first of all, you have to understand what do we mean by linearly polarized light. So a linearly polarized light is always in the form of electromagnetic wave. And what happens to the magnitude of electric field vector in electromagnetic wave? Does it remain constant? No, it varies. And how does it vary? It varies periodically with time. So if, if you have observed the variation of electric field and magnetic field, the, if the electric field varies like this, the magnetic field varies like this. 
like parallel uh, perpendicular to the electric field somewhat like this correct so b is the correct option question number 4 the energy of gamma ray photon is e gamma and that of an x ray photon is e x if the visible light photon has an energy of ev then we can say that so basically we need to compare the energy of gamma ray photon x ray photon and visible light photon okay so all of these are part of the electromagnetic spectrum so if you quickly look at the electromagnetic spectrum this is how it looks like now which are the uh, rays that we are concerned about in this question we are concerned about the gamma ray x ray and visible light and where are they located on this list so this is visible rays this is gamma ray and this is x ray so we are concerned about these three things so looking at these three things you can say that the wavelength of visible light is greater than the wavelength of x ray which in turn is greater than the wavelength of gamma ray right because as we go up the wavelength increases now we know that energy is equal to hc by lambda right so energy is inversely proportional to wavelength that means a uh, a ray with more wavelength will have less energy so therefore we can say that energy of visible light now if we talk about wavelength then the wavelength of visible light is maximum so if we talk about energy the energy of visible light will be minimum so we can say that e visible light is less than energy of x ray is less than energy of gamma ray so which is the correct option it is option c Question number five: A plane electromagnetic wave of frequency twenty megahertz travels through a space along x direction. Okay, if the electric field vector at a certain point in space is six volt per meter, then what is the magnetic field vector at that point? Okay, so whenever we talk about an electromagnetic wave, we definitely talk about both electric field and magnetic field. Now, at any point. what is the relationship between electric field and magnetic field so at any point electric field and magnetic field their ratio is equal to the speed of the electromagnetic wave right so we can say that the magnetic field will be equal to electric field divided by c so in this case the value of the electric field vector at the point is 6 volts so e is 6 volts and 6 volts per meter and speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 so this is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 tesla that is option a Question number six: In electromagnetic spectrum, the frequencies of gamma rays and X rays and ultraviolet rays are denoted by n one, n two, and n three respectively. Then, so basically, we need to find out relationship between frequencies of these three radiations. Again, these are all part of the electromagnetic radiation. So we will quickly recall the electromagnetic radiation list, and here we see. gamma ultraviolet rays x ray and gamma rays so looking at this you can say that the wavelength of ultraviolet ray so ultraviolet ray is denoted by n3 so basically wavelength of ultraviolet ray is greater than wavelength of x ray is greater than wavelength of gamma ray so ultraviolet ray is denoted by n3 now wavelength and frequencies are inversely proportional to each other so we can say that frequency of ultraviolet ray is less than frequency of x ray is less than frequency of gamma ray so frequency of ultraviolet ray is given by n3 in this question so n3 is less than x ray is given by n Two and gamma ray is given as n one, so we can say n three is less than n two is less than n one. So basically, option A is the correct option. Question number seven: The electric field associated with an electromagnetic wave in vacuum is given by E is equal to forty I cos K Z minus six into ten to the power eight T, where E Z and T are in volt per meter, meter and second respectively. The value of wave vector K is. Now, what is the generalized expression for electric field associated with an electromagnetic wave? It is given as E is equal to E naught sine K Z plus omega T, something in this pattern, right? 
Okay, so in this question, if you compare this general expression with the expression which is given in the question, you, you can compare and see that the value of omega is given as 6 into 10 to the power 8. So omega is given as 6 into 10 to the power 8 in the question. Now we know that omega is equal to 2 pi nu. Omega is angular frequency which is equal to 2 pi nu where nu is linear frequency. So this is equal to 6 into 10 to the power 8. Perfect. Okay. Now let us talk about wave vector k. So wave vector k is given by 2 pi by lambda. Right. So how can we write lambda because we do not know the value of lambda. But from here in this expression we, we know the value of nu. Right. So value of nu is 6 into 10 to the power 8 by 2 pi. So is there any way by which nu and lambda are connected? Frequency are lam and lambda are connected? Yes, of course. So we know that nu is equal to c by lambda or we can say 1 by lambda is equal to nu by c. So therefore instead of 1 by lambda we can write it as nu by c. So therefore this is equal to 2 pi into now we can put the value of nu here. This would be 6 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 2 pi into c. So 2 pi 2 pi will cancel. So this is 6 into 10 to the power 8 divided by c which is 3 into 10 to the power 8. So 3 2 is a 6. 10 to the power 8, 10 to the power 8 would cancel. So the value of k will be equal to 2 meter inverse. That is option A. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.